In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the split close formation out of the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive playbook. I think this is one of the most slept on formations year in and year out. And I'm really excited to bring you kind of a little bit of a mini series or mini guide on this package out of the Tampa Bay playbook. Now, like I said, this is the split close formation. I want to go over some packages real quick. Before I do that, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we post videos every day that can help you get better at at Madden. We're in Madden 22 kind of training camp season. And the reason I wanted to break down split close is because it's a formation that has been good for the last three to five years that I've been playing the game. And so I'm assuming it's going to be very good in Madden 22, just like it is very good in Madden 21. And so this is a great formation to kind of start out the year in. Really fun and uh, really effective for a lot of different reasons. We're going to go over some of those in this video, but I actually have a full split close ebook out as well um, based out of the New England playbook. So if you like some of these concepts and you want to get my New England Patriots offensive guide that not only has split close, but it has everything in the New England Patriots, including trips, tight end, uh, bunch, um, and, and I think ace slot offset as well as several other ones. That's all available for you. So I'm going to put a link to that guide in the description. You can kind of get a jump start on some of these concepts for Madden 22. Um, and the guide's super, super cheap right now. The price will be going up in Madden 22. So if you want to get it now while it's cheap, it will apply to Madden 22. A lot of the content there is going to be successful in Madden 22 for you as well. So anyways, all that to say, let's go over split close from um, this formation. And the play that I want to go over the most is the play wide receiver corner. Uh, I think it's the best play in this formation. It's been one of the best plays for years. And as a general rule, what we want to do with this is we want to run our uh, three, our three right, or um, I apologize, our two wide receiver set here uh, to the right. Okay, so as you can see here, we're on the left hash mark. If we were on the right hash mark, we'd want to flip everything that we're doing as a basic idea and concept. Now, what I like about this is if you take a look at the square route, you see that it's basically that route from curl flat. So I can smart route that post and make it go really, really deep. I could also leave it on its default depth and um, make it more of an intermediate passing window. The other thing about this play is you don't really have to hot route anything. That's another thing that I really like about this. You have this really fun little C route right here that does a lot of damage against blitzes. And all I'm going to do is give them just a little baby motion just like this. And basically what I'm doing is I'm reading this right to left. Now, if you take a look at that C route, you're going to see that if I pass lead that up on the sideline, I'm going to have a pretty good uh, opportunity to beat zone coverage. If I don't motion that C route out, it will go a little bit deeper. Let me show you that. So if I don't do any motion whatsoever and I just play it, you'll see it gets really in a good spot against Mabel coverage. Very good spot against Mabel coverage because um, you're going to see it's going to get basically under the yellow or under the, the cloud and over the seam flap. That's the idea um, as to why this route is so good. It's also one of those rounded C routes. So it's really going to do a good job against man, and we'll show that in just a second. But as you can see here, you just kind of basically pass lead it through the zone. Now, the other thing that we can do with this is we have um, a little bit of an opportunity to beat cover three. It doesn't always work, um, but this placement of the, of the uh, if we just fade Godwin, you're going to see here that he is in a really good position to do some damage against cover three. Um, the post... You see the post coming over the top of him right there for a pretty good dot over the top. Um, that's another thing that you have going for you on this concept. Now, real quick, Mabel coverage. Whenever someone is running a lot of Mabel coverage, typically their user is going to go with the post route because it's the intermediate route. That's why I absolutely love this little check and release route to the back. It's a great little route to just simply check the ball down. The thing that I like about split close the most is the fact that it has such good pass protection because you have two running backs in the backfield to be able to block. And it also does a really good job um, with different kind of balance. So I can run uh, power O. I could also put the fullback slam in my audibles as well and have that concept. Um, the other thing with this is if you wanted to put a traditional corner right up there with hot run master, you certainly could do that. Um, we have some other plays like halfback wheel uh, that where we have that corner route, kind of that corner route hitch concept, which we'll go over that in another video. Uh, but anyways, this idea of the C route, I really like this C route a lot against man-to-man. -man. You'll see that if I get it really outside, nobody follows him, which is really nice. 
So I can just he, see how he gets outside the seam flat right there. That's a really cool little feature of this play. So really a lot of it is kind of playing a little bit with the motion snap as well. Um, you know, the more outside you get him, the better the spacing becomes on this. You see really good spacing. Uh, against man, he absolutely toasts man coverage every single time. Um, so you're going to have a consistent man beater on that right side. And then you're also going to have a consistent man beater on this left side. Um, you'll see here that the square receiver uh, is going to do a really good job, just basically right on the cut, inside position against man. And that, you know what? If he doesn't catch it, you're not going to throw a pick. Most of the time he's going to catch it, even if it's a weird, awkward animation like that. Even if they get a good press animation, which they did on that play, he's going to be able to do very well. But this is more common of what you get right there. You see how he got that inside release and really got about two to three yards of separation uh, against that coverage. And the next thing about Mabel coverage that I want to go over is this idea of if they sit on this curl and they have some kind of crazy zone adjustment over there to stop that high-low between the flat and the other route. If you take a look at this square receiver, you're going to see that he's going to get in a really unique little position. Um, the one thing I will say about that square receiver really, really quickly is don't count on that receiver to necessarily get over the top of a cover three unless you smart route him. You have to smart route him to get him into that really um, kind of unique positioning on the sideline. Let me just show you that real quick. So you see here, now he's in a really good spot. The only problem is he kind of stops running, as you can see. So it's not the late, delayed read that we really want. Um, he's just not in a position. And the way that the alignment of split close just happens to be is oftentimes what you're going to see happen out of split close is you're going to see that when I motion the C route out, R1 is going to have a good chance at beating cover three for one play touchdown. See how I get this motion out? See how he goes there? And I just pass lead right. Now, if I have Gunslinger, this is a lot more consistent because Brady has pass lead elite. It doesn't quite get the ball out there enough. His arm is just not strong enough to make the throw. But if you're playing in Madden Ultimate Team, you're going to have a lot of very consistent opportunities to be able to hit this fade route, um, this little stock fade to X. And you'll see here again, let me just show you, pass lead it all the way to the right, kind of hold the finish. Do a little swerve catch. You see how I got a step over the top. Let me do it one more time and just try to get it here for you so you can see it. This is a great way to deal with Mike Blitz 3. It's a great way to deal with pretty much any cover 3 because really there's nothing, not a whole lot they can do. You've got this table route um, that you can hit, and we'll go over that in just a second. But again, just right there. Just get it out there. Click on, and I can't get him the ball because Brady's arm is terrible. But you do have a window to throw that. I'm going to throw it one more time just because I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, I just want to – I know I can throw this ball. So, again, let me just show you here. Because of where he's at on, the, on that hash mark, he's in a really good spot. So, let me just try to lob it. Just really get it out there. You see they're out of range is what I'm getting. So, he's just not getting the ball out enough. But that is what it is. So, anyways, it's a good cover three meter if you have a quarterback that can make that throw. And then the next thing I want to show you is – um, I'm going to show you one other way that you can run this in a second. But the table route is really good. So if they're running a lot of seam flats, you'll see here that this flat is wide open. All I got to do is just throw it out there, get three to five yards. To me, that's fine. Um, if you're getting blitzed, let's say you get blitzed out of this look. This route is so good against the blitz. And what you do by the motion is you make this into basically a spread set um, really easily. So if I'm getting blitzed out of cover three and I motion circle out, Watch how they're going to jet to him. And then you see here that I've got a blocker that I can basically get up field with on that table route. So really effective little concept. The other thing is if you wait on it for just a split second, um, maybe just a little bit longer, you're going to see if I'm just going to sit strong and then throw. Now I've got even more space to be able to, to get up field really easily against the blitz. I also have a back blocking. So if they send six... Even if they send six, you'll see here the back. If I ID the left side backer and I shift my line to the right, right, something like that, what you're going to see here is that back should pick up that blitzing backer on the right, and now we can sit in the pocket and make a read against a six-man pressure, which I think is super important and super effective uh, against this. Okay, so that's that. Uh, I didn't go over man. I did go over man on the C route. Really, your two primary man reads um, is your C route and your square receiver, the running back will beat man to the outside as soon as he cuts on that on that initial cut, he will beat man to the outside for a couple yards as well. Um, now I wanna show you one other little way that you can run this. This is a little bit more um, specific to if you want to try to hit this post route late in the play for a big game. 
And basically all we're going to do is we are actually going to take the um, the C route and we're gonna motion him to the left and we're gonna take the running back, we're gonna put him on a ghost route. So this little motion right here, and you're gonna see that it's gonna create kind of a levels almost type concept where you've got them coming at multiple points. And if you look at this square receiver, you see he's gonna completely glitch out every single zone in the game and really get over the top of stuff. This is also gonna still serve as a really good cover three beater. I'm gonna be able to throw um, that, that streak that I was telling you about, I still can throw that. You might not even have to put the running back on a route. Let's just block him for just a second. And I just wanna show you, so I get extra protection and just watch this square receiver just run himself open on the sideline. Again, I threw it a little bit too late on that, but you see the idea. Uh, the ghost route will completely hold every zone really, really well. If you have to, um, you can also put him on a option route. Uh, and against zone coverage, he's gonna sit really well. So he's gonna sit, hold zone, hold zone, hold zone. And then I'm just throwing this down and away to the outside, just like that. So that's a way that you can kind of run that concept if you wanna hit the post. But thanks for watching this video. If you want to get the rest of the Split Close Offensive Guide, I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description. I think Split Close is very underrated. There's a lot of really good things you can do. It's a very balanced formation. And if you really like to use your running backs on routes and stuff, this is a great formation for you. So thanks for watching. If you want to get the full guide, it is in the description.